Hey guys, hope you guys are all doing well. By the time you see this, I probably filmed it maybe a week ago. And I uh, have some orders ready for cigarettes. Thank you everyone for being patient with me and uh, purchasing the cigarettes. Pretty good run. I enjoyed it a lot. I can't wait for my next run, which should be probably at the end of March. I'll still continue to make some, but I'm going to really pump it up a bit more. Have shit ready. I'm going to have Salem's, Winston's, Marb's. Uh, the Paul Mall's looks spectacular and cools. I'm going to have to redo. I've been using that template since last year. So I got better at Photoshop. I think I'm going to spend some time redoing them. Anyways. So I had this guy hit me up who said he had a radio battery for sale. Uh, I don't know yet if he wants me to put his name in the video. If he ends up wanting my name, his name in the video... Uh, I'll be sure to link his Instagram and his name. And this dude makes my collection look like, well, like shit. He was sending me pictures. He has crates of PRC batteries and antennas and all this weird, cool shit, right? And as many of you know, I am currently building a uh, PRC 77, right? My messy ass attic. I'm sorry. <laughs> and once again, I'm actually moving again to my apartment. Uh, so as many of you guys know, I am building the PRC-77, and I need, you know, antennas and handsets and all kinds of shit. So I asked them for a price, because uh, on eBay, I found a couple for like, you know, 40 plus $40 shipping from fucking Sweden or some shit, and fuck Swedish people. And he gave me a pretty interesting offer. He wanted a mystery box. Now, when he said this, I got really excited. This is something I've always wanted to do, but I've, <laughs> I don't think anyone would ever be into it. You know, because when it's like 3 a.m. on my YouTube, I look up random mystery boxes because it's fun. And he wanted a Vietnam War mystery box. Now, what I'm getting in return is a uh, post-war radio, I mean, post-war battery. It's still the same thing, just different date. A 10-foot antenna a three-foot antenna, and an antenna bag. So I got a bit carried away in what I'm giving him. It just, it sounds like a really fun idea. It's something I've always wanted to do. And honestly, I'd probably be open to doing this in the future. I had a fun time. Uh, I definitely am the one losing out on the deal here, but uh, yeah, it's, it's still fun for me. So here is my first ever Vietnam War mystery unboxing. I hope he ends up seeing this and getting some information and everything I sent him. First up, we have a sea ration stove with a slide keeper. This would have been made in bush. Huh, get it. With I use an original sea ration can. I cut it out with a church key and it has a slide keeper attached on the back of your rock and it is a stove on the go. That's interesting. That's kind of cheap. I just you know, threw it in there. A lot of this stuff is like thrown in stuff, but just cool random stuff that would have been used as personal items. Next up, I got a whole box of these. Uh, it has some fading on them. They all do. But these are 1960s VA Air Mail post office envelopes. And these are pretty cool for me to get my hands on. I have yet to see a decent amount. I got like a whole box, like 20 bucks in eBay. Yeah, it was like the coolest thing ever. How many I got. So next up, uh, he wanted more personal items, and he said he, you know, loved America. He, he's like a really, he's a really patriotic dude. I mean, he's got some cool ass toys, and he's a very patriotic dude. So I'm thinking at the time, if I loved America, I was serving. You know, if I was to be serving at current day, I'd probably read about the Vietnam War. But back then, it probably World War II might have been too soon to be caught up in. So Civil War must is pretty hot at that time, as well as Civil War reenacting was extremely hot at that time. So I got him a 1958 print of uh, a Civil War book. So I pulled that off my personal collection. Next up is a reproduction Vietnam War angle head. I made it myself. Up to Vietnam specs, not Farby. So I made that. Next up, a couple of M60 rounds. His dad was in the Air Force in Vietnam. And there's a picture of him holding M60, so I thought I'd give him a couple dummy rounds. I mean, uh, blanks. Now, the cool thing about this is the actual Vietnam M13 links. The Vietnam ones will have holes drilled through the middle of them. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it was the same material, but don't, don't quote me on that. Next up. 
M16 bayonet with a M8A1 scabbard. Now this is like a $70 bayonet. So that was pretty cool. I don't know if he has one here or not. I should have asked, but he really wanted to be surprised. I'm kind of just trying to surprise him. Next up, we have an accessory packet. This is always cool to throw in the back of a rook. We have U.S. government skill craft pens. If you appear correct, this would have been issued to troops. Fair to give them the envelopes, I'll give them the pens. Dawson beer can. This was a brand that was discontinued in about, I think, in 1968. I believe it's based on the Illinois, but uh, that could have been someone's hometown beer. <laughs> Next up, we have a uh, Nixon pin. Nixon now. And the famous Avon, Avis pin. We try harder. Some Sea Rat TP. 1962 Nose and Eye Drops. Vietnam War bandage for a field dressing pouch. Now you can still get post war ones, but this one is a Vietnam one. Now this, these go for I think about these go for I paid 40 bucks for these before, but I got a pretty good deal, so I figured I'd give them one. This is a uh This is a fucking thumper bandolier with the eggshell inserts. So you would have had this with the M79. Good to have. If you don't have one, you don't plan on getting an M79, this is always a good trade. They fit the 40mm uh, shells for the M79. I think I said that wrong. i drag it, man, now. This one... This one I don't want to give away, but I'm, I had some fun with this. This is a 1968 gated Pepsi bottle. That constitutes a personal item. The October 1970 Playboy magazine... It's it's got it's got good pictures in there. That one actually don't, doesn't have the pictures ripped out. Most of the time you see Playboys with pictures ripped out. This one I got for about fifteen dollars at Warren Militaria. I uh, I ordered it because I thought I lost mine and I found mine like three days later. So here's my lip anti chap. That's always a good pocket filler. I think sixties Winston uh, matches as well as some C wrap matches. Something that's really nice, probably the most expensive thing I have in here. This is a Kodak Retina uh, IA camera. It's 35 millimeter. I believe they discontinued these early 70s, late 60s. It does work. It does function. You're going to be maybe confused. You press that button, open it up, take pictures. I think I took my film out, but it does still work. I have used this at events. And you can actually get 35 millimeter still produced. That's good. And I also have to carry in case for it, too. It's on a separate strap. Uh, we have some sea ration items. We have a uh, third pattern jungle fatigue top, size small, patched for first cav. Let's see if we can get a date on here. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. This thing is mint condition. See, small regular. I do not see it on here but it is pretty nice condition and it's patched for his first cab right now with subdued patches for a weight war uh, another 1970 Playboy magazine uh, pack my Paul Malls these are the ones I make and then I was trying to make Lucky Stripes and <laughs> I messed up on the pack for Lucky Strikes. It didn't turn out that good. Instead of throwing them out, I just threw them in the box. Because I'm not going to sell something if I don't like like it all the way. But I did stick this in my helmet band. And it looks fine when it's in the helmet band. I just really fucked up with the tinfoil. So, this was a really interesting idea. <laughs> it's, uh, that's, that's all you got for the... Uh, for the... Uh, what's the fucking word? Uh... Mystery box. So it was it was pretty interesting. I uh, hope you enjoy it. If anyone else is into this idea, I'd be more than happy to do it again. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I did lose it out on this. I do hope you enjoy, and hopefully...
somebody else comes to me with the idea of doing a mystery box because I had a pretty fun time with this. So uh, thanks, guys. I'll see you.